All right, folks, in this video, we're going to be talking about sound holes, big holes and little holes and medium-sized holes. The hell you say? <laughs> All right, what is going on, folks? Thank you for tuning in here and keeping it here. And yes, before you ask, I am burnt alive. Burn up, man. Fell asleep in the sun. My whole body's like this, except for a little patch around here. Hey, anyways, people are asking me a lot of times about their sound hole in their guitar. They want to know if I enlarge the sound hole, will my guitar uh, sound any better? Will it make it any louder? Or does it hurt anything? And if so, what size should I cut the sound hole out? I used to know what Tony Rice's, uh, that old uh, guitar that, uh, what's his name? I can't think, man. I mean, it's that uh, heat's killing me. Clarence White played an old Martin guitar, and I don't know if anybody knows if Clarence enlarged the sound hole on that guitar that Tony got a hold of later and played it his entire career. Uh, I know what the, the measurements is. I've got them wrote down on where they are. But uh, my Dan Tomiski Martin guitar, I got the sound hole out in it the same size Tony's was, and it actually helped that guitar. People ask me all the time, should I do it? Can I send it to you? I said, yeah, I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll charge $150. That's what I charge to do it. If that's all I do, you know, it's just, just enlarge the sound hole. Uh, this one here, I enlarged it, and uh, I'm not sure. It's, it's bigger than Tony's. Well, let me just get you bring it over here. I'll show you how you can measure yours. There's nothing to it. And if you want to check your own or hold a ruler down there and imagine what it would look like, you know, the bigger hole. And then we'll talk about what the, what it does, what it actually does when you enlarge the hole. Well, one. All right. The only thing you're going to need is glasses. And a tape measure works pretty good. And you might need some more light on the subject. <laughs> the only thing you're doing, basically, is measure from the inside of the hole to the inside of the hole and you can do it you know you can do it this way or across it or this way it doesn't matter it should, if it's round it should be the same everywhere this is almost a five inch hole <laughs> it ain't off by far it's uh let's see four and a half four and five eighths is what it is if i measure it this way it should be the same yeah, four and five eighths. I was experimenting with this guitar when I enlarged this sound hole. I thought I was going to end up doing an echo set on it anyway, and I ended up shaving the bridge. Good guitar, man. Very good guitar. Doesn't need anything done to it. Shaved the bridge and got the action down really low, and it's never moved anymore. So that's uh, what did I say it was, man. I done forgot. Five and uh, four. Jeez. Four and five eighths, I think is what I see it. Yeah, four and five eighths. So there you have it. But like I say, that's a little bit big. You could probably, I wish I could remember what Tony's was, man. I, if I can remember, I'll, I'll find that if I can find it and put it in here. Four and a half would be plenty big. Really, it would. And it would be easier to uh, measure and cut, too, I think. Anyways, let's talk about what... Uh, this does if you enlarge the sound hole compared to a, a wee little sound hole or a regular normal one. Hold on. Well, it feels good for one thing. Enlarging your sound hole. What's what good does it do, man? Tony Rice will tell you. He would have told you it don't do any good, <laughs> not to do it. And I basically say the same thing. Unless somebody wants me to do it, I've done a bunch of them. I did this one. Uh, my other Martin's done. And uh, I've got videos of me enlarging holes, sound holes. Well, what's the purpose? Why? A lot of people want it just for that look. But it does change the sound of your guitar pretty big time, pretty major. If you got a guitar and the sound hole is the normal, come from a factory and is the normal size, and you've got a whole lot of bass, some guitars, usually Martins, Santa Cruz's, some really high-end guitars, when you hit a chord, the, the entire guitar just shakes all over, man. You feel it vibrating against your belly and the neck. You can feel it in your hands. I mean, if you have a guitar like that, I know you shouldn't do this to an expensive guitar like that, but I did it and I uh, have no regrets. But if you have one, it's got all that bassy note. Okay, when you enlarge the sound hole, 
bigger than the factory size, you're boosting up the high ends of that guitar and the mids. Well, you're boosting everything it has, really, up one step, maybe a couple steps, depending on the guitar. I, when I played acoustic guitar in bands, I soloed a lot. I could solo then. I can't do it now. I can barely play chords. You all know that about that. And enlarging the sound hole like this, I don't know, it lets the guitar cut through a little bit better through the mix. You got, you know, banjo, guitar, bass, mandolin, dobro, violin, whatever, however many instruments. Enlarging that sound hole, if you do solo any, or even play in rhythm, the entire guitar is louder. And it cuts through the mix better, you know. So if you're picking or leading, it really is a plus right there. But the price of being able to do that is losing a little bit of bottom end, you know, where I was talking about the whole guitar shaking and vibrating when you play it. You're losing a little bit of that. This guitar sounds good. This guitar has been on that tone light rig ever since the first video I made about it. It's been on there day and night. I just took it off long enough to make this video. And I'm going to do another tone light video comparison after a million hours of the tone light vibrating on top on this big hole here. <laughs> and uh, you guys can, I still got the first one I did before the tone light. And uh, whenever I do this one, it's going to be with all these hours, months, of tone light vibrating on the guitar, you can decide if it makes a difference or not. Anyway, it's back to sound holes. Get on. Wow, how do I get off on things like that, man? Get off? It's not a good choice of words when you're talking about holes. <laughs> uh, they make a thing. Maybe one of y'all can tell me what it is. I'm sure one of you all will tell me what it is. I don't know what it's called. I've seen them before. And it's round. Okay, it's got like fins in it, and it's round, and it's got a little thing, you can slide those fins, and it will open up, and you can change the uh, size of the hole it opens up to, you know, just by turning a little lever on the side of it. I don't know what they'd be used for, maybe to uh, restrict airflow, I don't know, man. If you've seen that, put it down here what it is. But I wanted to get one of those, whatever they are, I'd like to get one. And tape it on the front of one of these guitars with a big hole in it, like this one. Play it, and then close, slowly close the hole off and make it smaller, and then play it again. You can be, compare them just that quick. I guess I could take a CD and lay in there and kind of do that by moving, covering up parts of the hole. It wouldn't be the same as the being open right in the center of the hole. That's important, really. Anyways, that's what it does. If you make your hole bigger, you lose bass, bottom end, but you gain, uh, you know, I think the price is worth what you get back out of it. That's my own thoughts. You have to take your own choice, make your own call on that. You have to do it to a guitar first, you know, one that you can actually play and have in your hands or have somebody to do it and play it over a video to you, I guess, could do that. These are the same strings that was on this guitar before the tone right comparison and the first tone right comparison. Same strings. I'm going to do, you know, when I do it again, I want the same strings as being on They haven't been played. Just when I made those videos, tone right videos, you can search for that if you want to see it. But uh, whatever that thing's called, I was thinking you could tape it to the top of the guitar over the sound hole and then you can change the sides or have someone change it while you play the guitar and see how much the sound fluctuates. They're thin or just thin metal like blades in the middle of them that form a hole and you can adjust what size the hole is. Put down here if you know what that is because I've tried to think, man, for months and I can't, I don't know where I've seen it at, but I saw one. It looks like a thing you would restrict airflow with maybe or heat or something, I don't know. Anyways, if you want to make your hole bigger, you want to have more time, more mids and less bass, <laughs> pretty much in a nutshell. And you, you probably will have a little bit more volume. This guitar got way louder, way, way, way louder when I uh, installed, enlarged the hole. So I like that because it wasn't a very loud guitar before. Now it's, it ain't super loud. It's not as loud as my Dan Tominsky Martin. 
but it's a lot louder than what it was. So I hope that helps you guys and ladies with holes <laughs> that you want to enlarge. What am I stepping on here, man? Wow, I can't even make a video without crazy things happening. That's about all there is to enlarging the sound hole. If you want to, I know I have videos, I don't know how many, maybe just one or two of me enlarging sound holes on people's guitars. I don't think I did on either one of my two Martins, but you can search the channel for those if you want to see. It's not a, really a big job at all. Like I say, I charge a buck fifty for it. And uh, I know somebody, a wise ass, is going to say, dollar fifty, that ain't bad. No, it's hundred dollars, hundred and fifty dollars. Because, you know, you can't screw that up, man. Especially if you're doing it like I did to five, six thousand dollar guitars. You only get one shot at it. But, uh, you know, it's kind of, it'd be hard to mess that up, really. Unless you're just uh, really bad with hand tools. <laughs> you got to sand it, smooth it out. And I always like to uh, seal that where you cut out. And that wood is no longer sealed with finish. So you want to fill that with something. I color this one with a magic marker. And then put uh, lacquer, painted lacquer around it. So it looks kind of black and it don't look like open wood. And that way it's not open wood. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. By the way, you can look at this as your most recent installment of Quick Clip Tips.